Hello everyone and we hope you all are doing well. Welcome to another fan to play fantasy match preview. And no we are not previewing a BBL game to start the day. <laughs> we are going to start with the Super Smash and why not the BBL is a discussion for the next video. <laughs> But uh, yes, the Super Smash we have a cracking Otago game and the best part about watching games in New Zealand is those super short boundaries. So <laughs> yes, should be an enjoyable one and we have Nikhil bhai with us today. to carry you through the preview and give you some insights on what he feels are going to be the best players for the game yes always good to have a change there and uh, don't worry about the bbl we'll try and cover that as well but just so that you also know we'll start to pick and choose more because there are a lot of leagues coming up and it will it will only be fair if we try and give a few of them equal weightage if not because we already know how well we well is going in terms of the predictability So more on that and the rants later. Yeah, let's hope we have a good Super Smash game to begin with. Yes, hopefully a good first match. And mm-hmm. all of you should stay tuned. Tell us your player of the matches in the yep. comments. Very few comments, and that is also affecting our luck somewhere. So ensure yeah. that you spruce up the luck by doing yeah. that. And uh, it's also one of the last few days for you to redeem those deposit codes on Fan yep. to Play. So ensure that you do that right away. And now let's figure out what the venue conditions are as far as what the expectations are going to be. So first up, venue conditions. Nikhil by John Davies Oval, Queenstown. How do you see it going? And how do you how much how do you feel the batsmen are going to feast on these dimensions? Yeah, I think the dimensions tell you we are good for batters. Uh, We haven't had too many games. Zara games is venue pe hue nahi hai. Historically, bhi nahi hue itne zara. So, not too much to read into. But jitna bhi dekha hai ya pada hai ab tak apun ne. So it is good for even game hota hai. Average score ab ka around one fifty, one sixty hota hai. So batting friendly hai, but itna pada bhi nahi hai. But again, these are the boundaries. And if some of the other batting kin, to lamba zaroor mar sakte hai. So I think average game pakad ke chal sakte hai. Sizing prefer it is good to that. because then they are able to you know pace their knock better so zyada to nahi hai padhne ko kyunki 10 saal mein do game agar kisi venue pe ho rahe so it is going to be very tricky to say ke aisa hi hoga so i think it should be an even day probably more fell for pace and spin in like equal accordance matlab 60 40 maybe and uh, let's see a match ke baad shayad zyada idea ho jaye Yes, absolutely. So expect a good deck to bat on, like Nikhil Bai said. And because we don't have too much in terms of uh, previous experience on this deck, we don't want to ponder too much uh, upon this section. So let's look at what we can do in terms of combinations on our base team. So, like we said, the Otago game, and we have a cracking base team that is already ready for you. and first yeah. up in the keeping section we have gone with dale phillips and tim seaford both the best options as and they are also i would go on to say the most stable even batting options along with keeping from both these teams because when you look at the batting section you'll understand where i'm coming from in terms of the dynamism of the rest of the batting and in the batting we have gone with the two guys who we expect to take the least amount of risk in comparison to the other batters g travel and himesh mm-hmm. rathford you have other quality choices like katrin clark joshua finney mm-hmm. but all of them are the kind of guys who will go short a ball especially yeah. with such kind of grounds and hence we have tried to go with the most stable choices and heavy load in onto the all rounders bilkul usme nothing to add my answer is the same any which ways kyunki batter to hum hardly trust karte forget uh, the format or the competition that it is but it just tells you the risk is always far more worth with an all rounder jo aapko ज्यादा गेम में रहता है तो आपको वैसे पॉइंट्स ज्यादा दे सकता है सो दैट इज अ लॉजिक देयर एज विलियन सेड यू हैव क्वाइट अ फ्यू ऑप्शंस टू ट्राई विद एंड देयर आर क्वाइट अ फ्यू प्लेयर्स हु बैट वेरी लो एंड दे प्ले अ वेरी एग्रेसिव गेम सो इफ यू वांट टू गो अहेड विद देम यू कैन डू दैट बट इट विल ऑलवेज बी फॉर्ड विद रिस्क सो इट इज बेटर देन दैट यू पैक इट यू पैक योर टीम विद मोर ऑलराउंडर्स एंड ऑफ कोर्स यू कैन हैव अ लुक एट हाउ मेनी बोलिंग ऑप्शंस आर देयर बिकॉज़ देन दैट विल इंक्रीज द वैल्यू ऑफ समबडी लाइक अ बेन हैंटन or even Justin Clark or whoever you feel uh, will not always go more than two over because even in last few games everybody has not bowled their full quota over so that is something to also look into 
Yes, absolutely. So points to keep in mind when you look at this all-rounder section. Dean Foxcroft batted in the top order plus gave you full quota overs in the last game. Now, traditionally, he's not someone who bowls his full quota every game. He's the kind of guy that when he has a good first two overs, he'll go on to bowl his full quota. But the day he doesn't, he might not end up bowling all those overs. So keep that in mind, even though he did bowl in the last game. Same way, Michael Ripon is someone who you expect for to bowl his full overs, but he bowled only two in the last game, while Brett Hampton, who has won as one GL also before last year, is in my team because of that bias too. But he did not bowl at all in the last game. But again, his batting was very resourceful. He scored 27 runs at the deep end. But like we always say, when we take batters who are at the deep end, they have to play a high-risk game. And hence, yeah. it's important for you to see, if is he going to be the fifth choice in that bowling yeah. setup? Or is he going to be the sixth choice? If he's the sixth choice and you have a primary bowler who's available to you, then you can probably go with that first innings death bowler rather than him. Bilkul, and I think you may clack bowler that would important. Sorry to get that. Sorry to mix up between the two. Yes, so that was Ripon. And then in the bowling section, Tim Pringle, who I expect for to be very resourceful in this game because Otago have a line of right-handers after mm-hmm. Hamish Rutherford is dismissed. So, unless he sticks in, Tim Pringle should bowl through. Jacob Duffy, who is also a national team player along with Scott Kugline. So, both these guys are expected to get more importance than the rest. And we yeah. saw Michael Ray get three wickets in the last game, but he didn't bowl his full quota. He yeah. bowled just two overs. But he's someone who has very good change-ups. So, again, he's a good option for you to try, especially if he's bowling first. But like like I mentioned, it totally depends on the number of options that the yeah. team comes onto the field with. And then if you see more than five options, then you give preference to the international players because obviously they'll be given more weighted. So, Tim Pringle, Jacob Duffy, Santner, Scott Kugelin, these are the guys who you'll have to give more importance if the team is out with more than five bowlers. So, so, based on that input then, should we make the game uh, still a good for small league and mini jets? Yes, I think I think so because we still are able to determine based on that fact. So, if we know that those national yeah. players are going to come on and bowl the full quota, that makes it slightly more safer than us. Uh, uh, unlike someone like uh, Ben Maneti coming and taking two wickets <laughs> when there are a line of right-handers and the, his matchups are out and over the attack, over from the attack. So, yeah, I think uh, that makes it a little more clear. But, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. see, like, Mitchell Sandner not bowling his full quota unless he's had, like, a very mm-hmm. bad day. Same for someone like Scott or Duffy. So, I think that makes it slightly easier for you to predict. And we know that people will still heavy load batting because of the nature of the pitch. But we also know that it's not going to be easy for you to predict those three batters. Yeah. Like we always say, it's always going to be very tricky to predict those batsmen because yeah. now in today's time, many all-rounders come in and also are able to score the same amount of runs. And another common thread that you see through these all-rounders is Mitch Satna bats in the top five. Dean Foxcroft mm-hmm. bats in the top five. And Brett Hampton and my, uh, Brett Hampton also plays more important a role with the bat than with the ball for his team. So, if you're getting a multiple resourceful kind of combination, then I think that is ideal for you. Absolutely. <laughs> so, this level medium is small and mini gel. Please always back your visualization and see what works for you. Yes, absolutely. So, that rounds up our thoughts on the base team. Now, let's hear on what we feel are the best Grand League options. So, sir, who are your best Grand League options for this game? Sir, you go first. I'll wait. Okay, so my best Grand League options for this game from Otago. Like I mentioned, I might heavy load a bowler extra based on if they're bowling first. And that bowler would be Matthew Bacon. He has a decent amount of pace. And when they bowl first, he can also get movement up front, bowl towards at the death. And he's that kind of guy who will get you like an economy of 9 or 10 because that pace also travels at times but he can also get you a good amount of wickets so that is my pick as far as they're concerned and from northern i had quite a few choices in the batting section and i'm opting to go totally left field i'm going with henry cooper i think uh, last year he had a good role to play he bowled some off spin and apart from that he can also bat well down the order especially 
when there is a when there is a slight collapse up top, which is very possible with how the northern team bats. Because except for Jeet Rawal, all of them are pretty dynamic, which means that someone like Henry Cooper can at many times go under the radar, but yet score well for you in terms of fantasy value. Maybe and uh, fair calls. I am to one dam Jamal Ali death over zero. So I'll take. Back on Bacon's partner and Jacob Duffy as my pick from Otago. Again, you know enough about Jacob Duffy already, and because again he's also bowling key overs, makes it very handy for you to rely on. And the same correspondent from the other team, Scott Coglin, big name. You know the skills that he brings to the table. So whichever the venue goes about, however it goes about, you still think they'll be able to add value to your sides, and because they're likely to get. bunches which is why we try and back them more in grand leagues so yeah those are the two still slightly safer grand league picks but that's how the year has been yes like we keep saying not the right year to fidget with form and yeah. because we are not fidgeting with form too much in this game and we are seeing at least decently reliable options it's a good chance for you to invest yeah. a little more take part in the fcp investment leaderboard i shared rankings on the group so yeah. in short you check them out and you scale up or down your investment accordingly and make best use this is valid only till the 31st of december so ensure that you participate yep. win lots of prizes and tell us in the comments who your grand league picks from both teams are have a yes. good game and all the good luck to you yes see you with the rand the next one